going to make two new constraints, right? What are those constraints going to be? Right, it forces them to remain zero because we were able to satisfy it, and now we can run it again. <clears throat> what else do we change? We have these two constraints. What's the third thing that we do? We want to achieve goal three, right? Our objective has nothing to do with goal three, right? We have department hours for B, department hours for, for A. We need to include the profit. Do we care if we go over or under our profit in this case? Under. Under. We don't want to go under. So that's this one right here. So we're going to add that D, D minus to our equation. So these are the two things. One is for locking in to answer part C specific, part D, sorry, specifically. Um, but an additional question might say, okay, what else do you have to do to, to change the question? is meant to build a decision tree and evaluate it with a number of different options available to you. So the idea here is um, the short description is should we tank or not? All right, so should, should we intentionally do poorly as a sports team so that we can get good draft picks? Or should we uh, hire free agents who will come in with their high quality uh, skills and, and try to win via that mechanism? So that's what we're, we're trying to evaluate. So <clears throat> if we draw our decision tree, what two options did I just present to you as, as the choices that you have available to you? What can you choose to do? Yeah, so you can either do free agency or you can um, go through the draft. And then there are these four different scenarios that may encounter either one of those two. So you should have um, four different values that on off of each of those two decisions that you have available. So, and because I've numbered them for you, you can do that really easily. And we can first just mark what the outcome would be if we choose each one of those. So if we decide to choose free agency, what is going to be the outcome for scenario one? What are we going to make? 200. 200. How about if scenario 2 occurs? 3? <coughs> and 4? Okay. Here as well, what if we do 1? 450. 450. 125. 125. 0. 0. Negative 60. Negative 60. Now, if these were equally probable, we could quickly look at just our table alone and see that draft is going to be better than free agency, right? Because in each one of these scenarios, the draft is a, a better choice than, than the free agency option. But they don't happen with the same uh, probabilities because there's more uncertainty in our scenario with the draft outcome than there is with the free agency outcome. So we have to look at the probability. So what is the probability that scenario one is going to take place if we go through the free agency route? 20%. What's that? 
20%. Okay, how about if scenario two? 55%. Scenario three? 15%. And scenario four? 10%. So we can compute what the expected value would be if we went this route, right? What would we do? Yeah, we multiply the probability times the outcome. So this one is going to be 20% times 200 is going to be 40. Uh, 55% times uh, 50. Well, let's see, that's five, 25, uh, 27 and a half. All right. 15% times negative 50 is negative 7.5. And 10% of negative 100 is negative 10. So we can add these all up. And we can see that uh, this is the expected value of 50. We can do the same procedure here, right? What are the probabilities if we go through the draft that will end up in scenario one? Twenty-five percent. How about scenario two? Scenario three? Twenty-five. And scenario four? What's that? Twenty. So now if we add those up, what is the outcome there? That's uh, 1, 1, uh, 2.5. Uh, this one is uh, 37.5. This one is 0. That's really terrible. And this one would be negative 12. This is 1, 1, 2.5, 37.5. So you get here an expected value of um, uh, 10, uh, 8. So by the expected value decision uh, option, we would prefer the draft, right? Because we would expect, on average, to get a higher return. So that's not the only um, decision-making strategy we have, right? So if we go to the next page, I ask you to evaluate it according to each of the different decision-making strategies, right? So the conservative. So what would the conservative strategies recommend? What does the conservative strategy evaluate? Yeah. The max, it, it wants to get the minimum loss, minimum. right? Yeah, so we look at this one and what's the maximum loss we would get? Negative 100. The maximum loss we would get here? Negative 60. So we're doing the minimum, right? We're finding the minimum value with this decision. We're doing the minimum value of this decision. We pick the minimum of those two. So again, the conservative solution would say, go with the draft. How about the optimistic solution? What do we do in that case? The maximum gain. So we, we look here. What's the maximum value we could get? 200, right? The maximum value we could get here is 450, and we pick the maximum of those two values, right? So we're doing the maxi max in this case, rather than the mini min, we're doing the maxi max, and we get again the draft strategy here. Right? We already went through the expected value. Um, so the last one is the minimax regret, right? So let's compute that. Um, or not that so how do we do minimax regret? What do we need to do? 
we need to make a regret table. Right? So we have our two options here, free agency and draft. And we just need to look at the regret for each one of these scenarios. So what would the regret be if we picked free agency and opened it up in scenario one? What's that? No, it's not zero. Why not? Do you know how much you're losing if you don't pick the best? Right. So in scenario one, we could have made we made two hundred, but we could have made four fifty, right? So so it seems weird, right? You win the championship and you have regret. <coughs> How about uh, scenario two with free agency? 75. Scenario three? Fifty, right? And scenario four is forty. Right? <clears throat> this one's a weird one because what's the regret going to be in each of these cases? Zero. So remember, we're doing mini max regret. What's the maximum regret we would encounter here? 250. The maximum regret we encounter here is zero. And we want the minimum regret possible, right? So in this case, the draft would be the minimax regret. So it's not a very exciting <coughs> anticlimactic. So in all of these cases now, the expected value, the conservative, the optimistic, and the minimax regret, we're all pointing to um, the draft as the decision that we should make. So when you get to, um, if, if I were to ask you a question, make a recommendation and justify that, based on all these things, this would be really easy to do, right? Every single decision-making strategy says draft, draft, draft. It's, it's pretty easy. If, if it's more mixed, you'll have to look at it a little bit more carefully. All right. Uh, expected value with, of perfect information, right? How do we do that? So what, how do we do the expected value of perfect information? What do we do in this case? It's kind of like a regret table, but a little bit different, right? We're saying, what if we knew what the future would hold, right? What, what would we do, right? So if we knew we were going to end up with scenario one here, what would we choose to do? We would choose to do the draft, right? right. What would we do in, in, in all these cases? Again, we, we would choose the, the draft. Okay. So how do we build this table then? If we knew that um, we would do the draft, we would pick the draft in this case, right? which would be 450. In this case, we would pick it. It would be... <coughs> 125, this would be 0, and this would be negative 60. And now you can look at, yes? Would it ever be split? So yes, be split. It, more often than not is split. So then how would you make it split? <laughs> um, you have to look at, if I know the scenario is going to happen, so let me make a slight modification here. Let's say that this one, instead of being worth uh, 50, was worth 150. Okay, rather than 125. So in that case, we we would pick the 150 here, right? Because the 150 is the is the choice that you would make, rather than the um, 
than the draft because it would make more money in, in that scenario. And then what you have to do is you have to compute the, the probabilities. Um, and this is where this problem kind of fell apart because the probabilities of these scenarios were different than the probabilities of, the, of these scenarios. Okay, so um, let's just uh, pretend like they were the same for a second here so I can walk you through the rest of the question. I'll uh, do that to you again here. Um, so if these were equally probable, then you would do 25% times each one of these. Um, let's say the probabilities are a little bit lower. Let's say we only have 20% probability here. Let's say we have 40% um, probability here, 40% probability here, and 20% probability here. <clears throat> so then what we would do is um, multiply those together so you get 4, 50 times 20%. My hands up to 120%. Oh, thank you. Uh, let me make that real easy, real quick. Uh, plus 40, uh, 150 times 40%, plus 0 times 30%, plus negative 60 times 10%. Um, and so here we would get 90 plus um, 60 plus 0 minus 6 for a total of 144. That would be the <coughs> value of perfect information. We would know the expected value of perfect information um, in that case. And so if we could guarantee that we could find out what we, we would want, we would compare that to what our expected value was, and in, in this case, 138, if we could make that, um, if we could pay someone two or three million dollars to make us more certain of our outcome, then we could maybe make another three or four million. Uh, that's kind of an iffy proposition, right? Maybe it's not worth it. Yes? So, on um, test, will you make sure that those percentages are equal? Or if, if I ask for expected value of percentage, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I think that's the last question. Yeah. So, as you can see, in general, what I'm looking for are. Um, do you understand integer constraints? Do you understand binary constraints? Can you combine those binary constraints together to get some certain sort of behavior out of your model? Specifically, the four we looked at are k out of n, conditional, prere or prerequisite, sorry, um, and exclusive, mutually exclusive. Um, then, moving on from there, can you make this, uh, proper uh, quantitative decision making analysis by producing a decision tree, looking at the optimistic, conservative, minimax regret, and expected value, and tie that together to make uh, a decision. Uh, and then finally, um, do you understand how to do a problem that doesn't just have one goal, but has multiple goals, and how do you meet those goals as best as possible? So those are the, the four types of problems that you'll be looking at in this test. Um, we will have the same setup as the previous two. You can come an hour early and stay up to an hour late. Um, and you know, the test will be about the same length and, and um, difficulty, uh, extensiveness as, as this test that we just went through here is. So um, I, I believe you should be able to complete that. <coughs> the time given, and um, yeah, that's, um, then Friday will just be a work day, so if you need help finishing up your final project, um, you can do that. Um, I will also, if you have any questions, I can talk more 
and then since we don't have much time, what I'm looking for for your final presentation uh, on so in for your final um, instead of a final exam, this basically counts as your final exam. Uh, you'll be presenting your final project, you and your partner, um, to kind of do a quick overview of of what you've done, what uh, what your model suggested, doing a decision analysis and, and so forth. Like I said, I'll cover that in more detail on, on Friday, but most of Friday will just be um, allow you to, to work and get that all ready for the, the final presentation. Yes? Could you go over the like, final project deliverable? Um, so what I'm looking for for the deliverable for the final project is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is your model that you, you've got that um, for each of the three uh, seated uh, solutions. So maybe a separate tab for each um, seated solution. Um, and so then you've got your, your data. And then I'm looking for a, a write-up that uh, is where what I will evaluate. Your model will be just something that I can refer to, like, did their model really say that? And I'll go to the Excel spreadsheet and see if it matches what, what you wrote. But what you'll be evaluated is on this um, write-up. This, given these three models, uh, XYZ Consulting Company is suggesting to the Democratic Party that they should pursue you know, this redistricting option. To the Republican Party, we're suggesting this redistricting option, and to the, the public at large, based on all these uh, pieces of information, this is what we think the best option should be, right? And so, um, and so you're going to have to look at your, your decision analysis and say, you know, this is what the optimistic solution suggests, this is what the conservative solution suggests. This is what the minimax regret solution. This is what the expected value solution is. And looking at all those in total, uh, we think that the right solution is this. Um, so I'm expecting for the write-up that the recommendation maybe takes two or three pages. It's not a long write-up to do, but you might have a longer append the set of appendices where you include the data about how you made that decision and you can count your models as part of that appendix. So you can say, um, you know, the, the models are included in this separate file here. Um, so I, uh, I want to see what your models came up with, what that results in for uh, your different elections, what the decision trees are. Um, but you might not include all that nitty-gritty detail in the write-up. You might refer to that in your appendix. So if in appendix B is the decision trees for this, and they clearly indicate this, or there's a, it's very difficult to make a decision between these two options, or, or whatever the case is for, for your particular state. So we, what your grade on this will be is, can you give a good, justified reasoning about what the decision is and why that decision should be made, okay? And, and it should be backed up 